Hi, it's uh, Kevin May in the Focus Wise studio. Delighted to be joined again by Glenn Fogel, CEO of Booking Holdings and CEO of Booking.com. Hi, Kevin. Since last year, you've become the CEO of Booking.com. Yeah. So um, you've joined us quite regularly over the years. So thanks ever so much for coming back. So a um, couple of things to get through, if we may. It seems like, I'm sure it wasn't coordinated, but in those kind of most recent rounds of earnings calls, SEO has come up and you gave your position Correct. And uh, uh, Mark at uh, Expedia Great gave his position. Trips. Steve's got a very firm opinion about it. It came up on the eDreams call yesterday. What's going on? Is the, are we starting to see the kind of the beginnings of a, I wouldn't say a mutiny, but you know, people really start to be quite um, annoyed by it? Well, uh, let me be very clear on this. So mm -hmm. I can't speak for any of the other course. companies. I can't speak who's annoyed, who's not annoyed. Look, our business, the first thing most important is we always want to try and get as many people to come to us direct as possible. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we use SEO to try and get people to come in so we can then do a great service for them, yep. convert them, make them come back direct, loyal, love that. Mm -hmm. We use a lot of PPC tools. We try and get people to come in that way too, all different ways. We said on the call how SEO is a relatively small channel for us. We saw some headwinds, small, in the last quarter. And that's all really, uh, I've been asked this question a lot and that's, that's about the best I can say. I, I can't mm -hmm. speak as to what has happened with anybody else's operations, what's happened there. We're pleased with where we're doing things, how we're doing things. Mm -hmm. Life, not bad when you saw our numbers from last quarter. Yep, yep, your numbers are consistently very good. So, yeah. <laughs> and related though, I mean, how do you kind of approach your customer acquisition strategy anyway? I mean, you and Mark spend a lot of money in digital marketing with a certain company that gets referenced in those kind of conversations about SEO. Yes. And you obviously want people to come direct, but I mean, ideally you would like a much better, more efficient customer acquisition channel, Wouldn't right? I love it if everybody just came and we but didn't have don't, to pay it they don't, all? They, they don't, and the though. funny thing about that is sometimes some of our hotel partners sometimes, in a polite way, say, they would love if everybody would come to their hotels mm -hmm. and not have to pay anybody to come. And, you know, I'll bet most people who deal with, say, Google, for example, say, gee, I just wish we didn't have to pay them so much. And I'll yeah. bet Google probably says, gee, I wish they didn't have to pay. The fact is, this is a free market, capitalist economy, yeah. in which case, if you want to get people to come to your site, generally you have to market. Yeah. Marketing is not free. You have to spend money on it. You want to do it as efficiently as possible, best you can, to minimize those customer acquisition costs. Yep. That's what we've been trying to do for the 20 years I've been at this company. Okay, so I had a very interesting chat with uh, one of your one of your uh, employees, David Adamczyk, okay. in September at the World Aviation Festival. Similar setup. Yep. And he's head of the transportation part of Booking.com. And he's- Well, said, he's one of the senior people. Yes. He works for Brian Batista. I don't want Brian to think like he's lost his job. Brian, <laughs> no, Brian is in charge. It'd be an awful Dude. way to find out. Yeah, wouldn't it? <laughs> but, Brian, you're fine. <laughs> Just for the record, Brian. Okay. But um, he set out quite an interesting vision about what you want to do. You know, the first thing is the addition of Grab. Yeah. Was sort of announced. He mentioned that back in September. It was kind of been officially announced more recently. Right. How, how far can that platform idea really go? It can go very far, and here's why. The issue is every single person, when you go traveling, if mm -hmm. you didn't get to your destination using a vehicle, you will probably have to figure out how am I going to get around in your destination? Yep. Now, many places people will say, well, I'd like to rent a car. That's one way to do it. Yep. Another way people will say something like, I'm gonna use taxis or ride sharing capabilities, or maybe I'll use the public transportation. The Grab deal, really, really uh, exciting because when people go to Asia who are not in the Asia area, they may not know, how do I get a ride-sharing car to come? And they look at Uber and they typed in, you know, they try to say, here's my destination, and they'll say, wait, there's no Uber in Singapore, because Uber doesn't exist there. Grab exists there, people may not know that. Even more so, even if they knew about it or found out about it, they may be very hesitant and say, oh, I have to download the app? And then I have to put my credit card, I don't know this company, and they're concerned. Yep. Instead, because of what we did with Grab, is you can now go onto the Booking.com app. Yep. You get off that plane in Singapore, you go just straight to that Booking.com app, and it's just as if we were the operator. It looks yep. like that. 
it looks like booking.com. You don't have to download anything. And we have your credit card. So you just say where you want to go. Car shows up, takes you where you want to be. Seamless, beautiful. Okay, but how far can it go? Well, that's the start. Then you can do that all throughout the world. Do deals with all types yep. of different ground transportation players. Is it only including, ground? No, though? but it, well, yes, that is that is the trend. Well, of course, you know we're doing air too. That's a separate issue. Yep, yep. But we're talking about David and Brian and the, and the yep. transportation unit. So we can also go into ticketing, buses, public transportation, make it easy for people to do that. Yep. Basically, the whole idea of the connected trip, the thing that I've been talking about for some time You now, have, yeah. Is to create something that is seamless, holistic for the entire trip, every single part of it. From the time you think about it at home to the time you do everything and get back and everything in between. Do okay. it all through one place, booking.com. <laughs> you should do the ads, I tell you. Right, so. <laughs> I believe in it, I really do. Okay, so e travel for flights. Well, eTravel Light is one yep. person, you know, we're doing it in Europe. Yes. Priceline and Agoda together put together an engine that now powers our air product in Asia in the Agoda name. Yep. And we're going to continue to build that out. You, you, you may have seen recently what Skyscan has done, which is the, I have seen that. The, yes. uh, the, the kind of hybrid model. Yeah. Is that something that you would be interested in kayak doing? Because then kayak could power the flights element of what e travel is doing, right? Yeah, so Steve, uh, Steve, the CEO of Kayak, he's thought about this a lot, and he and I have talked about this. This is not something new. This isn't something no, that no, just no. came out of nowhere. We've been there in years and stuff. Currently, we like the way things are going now. And Steve Hapner is one of the smartest, mm -hmm. uh, best, most innovative entrepreneurs in our industry. And I trust his judgment and where we are right now, we like. If we want to make a change, we'll make a change. And his team can absolutely do that without much trouble. Okay, right. So uh, a couple of last points. I don't know if you've just been in there listening to Kyra Swisher, who's one of the-, the I have not. Okay, so she's just uh, finished uh, in the main auditorium there. She said, and this is put on your old M&A hat now, right? Okay. She said, there's too much investment money swilling around and that's actually dangerous. Do you, do you agree with her? Well, the word dangerous is an interesting word. Mm -hmm. If she's saying that's her that, word, not yeah, mine. I understand. If yeah. she's saying that because she means dangerous in the sense that a lot of people are going to lose a lot of money, I would say that probability is probably not small. The, I would definitely agree with her. There's too much money for the amount of projects, investments that will get a reasonable return, mm -hmm. and we see it. And I talk about this all the time. Yeah. What we have is we have the capital flows into the venture capital firm. Venture capital firm has to put that money to work. That's their job. So they're looking for something, they put it in. They give the money to the startups. Startup then says, well, we know, and they say no, put that in quotes, because they don't know this at all. But they <laughs> know that the right thing to do is just get market share, get it going. And then somebody says, well, the best way to sell stuff and get some growth is give the product away. So they're selling it many times below cost. Now. If you sell dollars for 90 cents, you can have a growth rate that's really, really great. As a long-term business, eh, it's not so great. Yep. That's what's happening a lot of parts of our industry around the world, and particularly some places in Asia, okay. where you see small companies, medium-sized companies either, that are getting giant amounts of money in these uh, fundraisers. And then that money is flowing from, it goes from the pension fund to the VC, from the VC, to the operating company, from the operating company, to discounts for the consumer. Consumer loves it. Why not? Yep. In terms of a long-term business plan, though, it's not great. Okay. Do you see that unwinding at some point and there'll be some kind of like, hang on a second, this is nuts. Well, I don't know. Can you can you spell WeWorks? <laughs> Give us your perspective on WeWork. Then. Well, WeWork, I mean, here you had a case where again, you had somebody who is operating a business at incredible losses, just unbelievable losses, right? And eventually they tried to sell this out to the public and, and the people who are not the VCs looked at that and looked at those numbers and those, and so, ooh, that valuation looks a little bit odd. They were not willing to fund this idea further. Now going from whatever the last round was down to one substantially lower, and now they're laying off a lot of people and trying to right size the business so it can actually be something on a trajectory that can actually make money. Yep. And you see this in other companies uh, 
throughout the startup, uh, not just our industry, it's throughout everything. Yeah. Okay. Uh, last of all, uh, Glenn, uh, you recently, alongside a couple of other brands and uh, Prince Harry from my home country, got into the sustainability effort, right? Yeah. So to do good as a collective. Yeah. Um, just give us your kind of broad view on that as to what, why did you suddenly do it then? Is it because there is this year seems to be the year of everyone's gone, yeah, okay, it's, um, you know, there's Greta and there's flight shaming in Scandinavia and things like that. Why, why now? Is it because it's. Well, like I would say that this is not something new to us at all. Yes, it's new to team up with the Duke of Sussex, uh, Prince Harry. We love doing that with someone else. It's good. And it's nice that we have other people in the industry who are joining with us in this effort, but this isn't new to us. We've been doing a lot of things for a long time about trying to make sustainability something that's important for the industry. And you know about our, our, our booking booster uh, program. Yep. We knew yep. a lot. Well, that's helping to provide grants, not loans, not investments. We're giving money away and we're giving away expertise, mentoring, bringing people to our headquarters in Amsterdam, booking.com to help teach and help make companies that are small but are involved in making travel sustainable to help those companies build out big. So we've been there for a long time. And here's why it's important, okay? We got one planet. Last time I checked, there is no, you know, planet yeah. B. Right, yes. We got, I'm, you know, I'm 57 years old. So the worst, if we don't do something, will probably be after I'm off this planet. But I got kids. And then hopefully someday there'll be grandkids. And I want there to be a world that people can enjoy. Look. Our mission is to help everybody experience the world. If there's no world, kind of hard to experience it. Right. So do you think, you know, speaking for Booking.com, for example, then, could it be harder on its hotel partners? For example, you know, there's a big thing about plastics, right? About what? You, plastics. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Some hotels are saying, yeah, we're going to do this and do that and be, try and be more sustainable, et cetera. Yes. So, could you take a lead as the biggest hotel booking platform on the planet with your partner saying, hang on a second, we're going <clears> to <throat> maybe penalize is the wrong word and you'd never say it, but just take a, a, a stronger approach with your hotel partners to get them to toe the line, come on board, whatever the phrase. I'm a you. firm believer that cooperation and working together works better than trying to hit people with a stick. Right. That but being we're said, in a, we're that in a being said but though, we should right? work. I agree, but working together and explaining how we together can help promote good practice. And look, there are lots of hotels that are doing the right thing. They talk about, and you see it all the time, yep. about don't put your towel on the floor. If you hang it up, we won't wash it. That's good, yep. right? Do you, if you don't need your sheets to be changed, put this on the, they're all sort of, those are small steps, I agree, but this is a start. And the hotels that are putting the water uh, restricting uh, shower heads and the people who are getting out of the plastics, that there are no plastic uh, disposable uh, utensils. Yep. People need to do it in every different way, shape and form. Now here's yep. the sad thing about it though. It really comes down to the people people demanding that they want this and being willing to pay for it or be willing to understand the costs involved. Yep. Because we've done experiments in the past where we've done things like, let's offer uh, an ability for our customers to pay for our carbon offset to help defray the carbon uh, that comes out of their trip. Yep. And we come up with calculators, and here's how much it would cost, and we'll do it all those do is pay for it, right? Not a lot of people want to pay for it. People talk about it, but they're not yet at the stage where the great masses are willing to pay more for it. Yeah. So that's what we need to do. Now, it, I imagine, I haven't looked at the data, but I imagine it's probably somewhat uh, demographic. And I imagine younger people are more willing to. I yep. imagine that older people like me, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if they're functioning how long they're going to be on the earth. Oh, do do but, you offset every flight that you take? Do I personally yes. do it? Every single one? I don't, can't swear that I've done every one. I've done right. a bunch, but I can't swear every one. Okay. Um, I will say, though, I do have an electric car. Okay. So I did do that. Okay. And by the way, Amsterdam, our people, do you know how many, the number of our employees who do not drive to work? It's very few people yeah. drive a car to our well, now. They ride bikes. They're bikes. They're yeah. biking the whole time. Mm. No, okay. that's clean and good. Okay. So I think we're doing a lot of things. And by the way, I'm not going to disclose with you now. But working on a, we're working on a bunch of things. Okay, good. Uh, Glenn Fogel, as always, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.